Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here and lending us your time. As mentioned by Dr. Sheila and Dr. Orbeta, we will be talking about our own air transport uh, sector this afternoon. We will look at the state. Next slide, please. Okay, so before uh, we look at our own air transport sector, let us first have an appreciation of, of how the air transport sector or the aviation sector, uh, what role does it play in the global economy? Next slide, please. Now, the air transport sector, as also mentioned by our uh, beloved FIDS president, it enables the conduct of global trade. It's important because it allows many businesses to have access to international markets. It, the air transport sector gives uh, a more efficient way of transporting products and services all over the world. So in 2019, uh, the Oxford Economics records around 6.5 trillion of goods that was transported via air, which is equivalent to 1% of international trade. Usually the high value and highly perishable products are being traded via air. Uh, the air transport sector also supports the conduct of international tourism. Uh, the UNWTO records that 58% of international tourists traveled by air in 2019. Of course, because, uh, because of the efficiency uh, provided by the air transport sector, it encourages productivity in many other sectors of the economy, such as manufacturing, telecom, and other uh, all other sectors, and this enhances the business operation, which ultimately leads to more jobs and employment. Next slide, please. Now, the latest data shows us that the contribution of the aviation sector or the air transport sector to global GDP is about $3.5 trillion. Of Indonesia or the Netherlands. Uh, the, air, the air transportation sector also provided 8.7 million jobs worldwide. This does not only include the direct employment provided by the sector, but also its catalytic effects to other sectors. Uh, employment related to the supply chain or employment related to the tourism sector. Uh, aviation jobs are also um, seen to be 4.3 times more productive than any job in all other sectors. One aviation job is actually equivalent to $117,000 uh, contribution in global uh, GDP. Now in 2019, a total of 48,000 goods were served and uh, 4.5 billion passengers were transferred via air according to Oxford Economics. Next slide, please. So having said that, uh, let's look at its role. So what, what role does it play in the Philippine economy? Next slide, please. Well, if we look at the direct contribution of the air transport sector to our GDP, it will appear small. Uh, the air transport sector is, also, is actually part of the transport and storage industry, which contributes less than 4% to our GDP. And the air transport sector alone uh, the contribution might seem minute at uh, less than 1%. So next slide, please. But its contribution does not only rely on its direct contribution, but uh, it also have other impact to other sectors of our economy. According to several studies, it is a leading facilitator of economic activities. Uh, the study of you at all looked at the impact of the air transport sector on manufacturing trade and, uh, and, and trade sectors. Uh, it also noted its contribution to agriculture, fishery, forestry, mining and quarrying, electricity, gas, water sector, and to Next slide, please. Next slide, please. 
Another study also noted that high-value industries are, are usually the main purchasers of air transport services. The study of Lianto and Rodolfo um, highlighted that about 21% of industry spending in the wholesale and retail trade is allotted to air transport services. Another study also looked at uh, the telecom industries, wherein 8.3% of the total industry spending is similarly on air transport services. Next slide, please. Perhaps the most valuable contribution to the Philippine economy is its role in uh, facilitating the uh, international tourism. Now, uh, the tourism has a direct GVA contribution to, uh, of 13%. Per, uh, 13 uh, it also provides uh, employment to many of the population of our population so 14 percent uh, contribution to total employment and the department of tourism notes that 98 percent of our tourists in 2019 arrived by air next slide please so this is the latest data from the aviation benefits and beyond borders uh, publication in Okay, so in 2018, the total contribution to the Philippine economy of the air transport sector is $10.4 billion. This is equivalent to 3.4% of our GDP. The total job supported by the air transport sector is around 1.2 million, which includes direct employment, indirect employment related to the supply chain. but also foreign direct investments and exports. Our top international tourists are from the Republic of Korea, People's Republic of China, United States, Japan, and Australia. Our top five busiest air cargo routes are Hong Kong, uh, Republic of Korea, UAE, Chinese Taipei, and Japan. Next slide, please. Okay, so having said this, uh, what can we expect in the aviation sector in the coming years? Next slide, please. So definitely there will be a growth in passenger traffic in the next years. The Oxford team forecasts around 8.2 billion passengers by 2038, and this is expected to support around 143 million jobs and $6.3 trillion in economic activities. Next slide, please. So where will that growth come from? Mainly, the travel will occur between China and Africa and also within Asia. Although you will also notice that uh, in a lot of these uh, regional groups, uh, re uh, regions, uh, growth in travel will, will occur. Next slide, please. In terms of uh, regional growth, projected annual growth rate for international uh, passenger traffic is expected to grow uh, very fast in the Asia Pacific region and in developing countries. Both, uh, both groups include the Philippines. Next slide, please. Now, country specific projection shows that by 2027, the Philippines will be expecting around 88.5%. 3 million passengers. And uh, in comparison, this is like more than 50% growth of in passengers uh, as compared to the 2019 uh, value. For Hong Kong, for Chinese Taipei, and even for Singapore. Next slide, please. Now, this projection is actually not really new. Uh, JICA has been telling us since 2012, uh, when they released their study, that uh, the Philippines must expect uh, the influx of in, in the coming years. Uh, if you look at the, uh, no, the, the graph, in 2019, uh, JICA's projection is actually close to 50 million. And uh, in actual data, actually, mas malapit tayo sa 50 million. We, we, I think we already surpassed this projection uh, given to us by JICA in 2012. Next slide, please. So maybe you're thinking now that, of course, we we experienced uh, the COVID-19 pandemic the past few years, and uh, somehow that that might have changed the trajectory for the 
air transport sector. So how did that change the situation? Next slide, please. Well, of course, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of us weren't allowed to travel. We have some mobility restrictions. A lot of government closed the borders. And of course, this resulted to a uh, decrease in passenger revenues and a uh, change in cargo revenues for a lot of airlines. But um, this reduction in revenues is actually um, slowly changing in 2021. And they are expecting that uh, things will change in 2022 and, and will go back to normal by 2023 or 2024. Next slide, please. So profit in the air, air transport industry is slowly recovering. Next slide, please. But um, it will not be the same for all regions. Uh, in the publication of the IAT, because a lot of the governments in the Asia-Pacific region are risk-averse. So traveling um, to different countries is not that uh, popular yet. It's, it's not that easy to, to travel in the Asia-Pacific region during this time. But definitely, next slide please, the IATA expects that by the end of 2023, most regions will be at or exceeding pre-pandemic levels of demand. So What's the main message? The the COVID nineteen just slowed things down, but the the um the expectation that demand will increase in the next few years, it it remains. It's just on pause right now. Next slide, please. Okay, so against this backdrop, uh, what is the current state of our air transport sector, of our air transportation infrastructure? Okay, so uh, currently we have 90 national airports. We have eight international airports, 21 principal class one, or these airports are those that could accommodate uh, aircraft that have at least 100 passenger. Principal class two airports, we have 20. These are uh, a bit smaller airports, which caters to aircrafts with, with um below 100 passengers, but more than 19. And then we have 38 community airports. These are airports used for general aviation aircraft. Um, note from this figure that uh, commercial airports or those airports catering to commercial flights are only at the long international airports, principal class one and principal class two. So technically we have 49 airports that are catering to commercial Okay, so table one just shows us uh, some specifics about the airports that we have. We can skip this one. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, based on the number of passengers, we have already experienced this uh, expected increase in passenger demand. Um, in between 2010 to 2019, we have seen an increase in the Passenger traffic, especially in our main gateway, the, uh, the Nino Aquino International Airport. As I've seen, uh, as, as I've said earlier, um, we're, we're nearing 50 million mark for the IA. Um, this is followed by uh, the Cebu Mactan Airport and the Davao Airport and the Clark uh, just at the Makapagal International Airport. Next slide, please. So visitor arrival, international visitor arrival by air also increased over the years. In 2019, uh, we experienced around 8.9 million uh, passengers. Next slide, please. And by port of entry, we can see that Naia remains as the most popular gateway for our tourists. It, uh, uh, its share in the total uh, arrivals is 61%, followed by Cebu International Airport and then 
uh, followed by the Calibu International Airport. Next slide, please. Now, the top 10 uh, visitors are from Korea, China, USA, and Japan, and Australia. These are the top five countries where our visitor, international visitors are from. So, napapalit palit lang sila uh, for the top top three spots, but these are uh, these are our usual visitors. Next slide, please. Um, we also observe a general increase in cargo traffic over the years from between 2010 and 2019. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, sorry. So what can we do to prepare for the looming increase in demand for air travel? Can you go back? Okay. Basically, we need to address prevailing issues and challenges in our sector. So what we did here is we we reviewed the previous study that was that were already done on the air transport sector and we summarized the issues that were discussed in those studies. We grouped the issues into four issues related to capacity, issues related to technical capability, number three, issues related to quality, and lastly, issues related to institutional environment. Next slide, please. Okay, we go first to the issue. Uh, regarding capacity. We have two problems when we talk about issues uh, uh, with our airports on capacity. So we are experiencing aircraft congestion and the second one is passenger congestion. So uh, for aircraft congestion, demand for, air, for our airport facilities is way more than its current capacity. Uh, what what uh, aggravates the problem is that the configuration of NAIA's runway and taxiway limits the type of aircraft that can be accommodated. NAIA's uh, runways are actually intersecting, which leads to congestion of aircraft. Um, flights must be planned to maximize arrivals, and arrivals are prioritized over departure. There is also a lack of rapid uh, exit taxiways, which affects our runway occupancy time, according to a study of Rodolfo in 2017. Next slide, please. Okay, so eating for slots in Naia, and uh, usually these general aviation planes occupies the runway much longer because they have smaller engines based on the same study. Next slide, please. In 2011, JICA already noted that most of our flights in Naia is scheduled during the daytime, so between 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And this causes problems because a lot are competing for the slots. Uh, in response to this, the government limited the number of arriving and departing flights to 40 per hour. Next slide, please. So NAIA, as we've seen in the previous uh, slide that I've shown, NAIA serves as our main gateway for passengers. And because of that, uh, a lot of passengers uh, are actually going through the IA, wherein the, the maximum allowable uh, capacity is only 35 million. In 2016, we breached that maximum capacity wherein we we accommodate a total of 39.6 million passengers, according to the study of you et al. in 2019. Next slide, please. So the congestion in the runway is actually a, um, a result of uh, another issue, our issue on the technical capability of our airport. So domestic flights, the reason why our domestic flights are mostly scheduled during the day is because of the lack of night rating and instrument landing facilities of most provincial airports. As of 2020, there are only 22 night rated airports. Uh,
based on the DOTR website. Next slide, please. In 2016, IATA released a report which noted that the utilization of our runways is not really optimized due to air traffic management issues. We have issues on vectors and delay, lack of radar, non-standard air traffic control procedure, poor end route communication, safety concerns for ground operations. Next slide, please. Indicators of quality also tells us that we, there's a need to improve the quality of our air transport infrastructure. So uh, in terms of aviation infra infrastructure, uh, our infrastructure pales in comparison with other neighbor countries. So I will explain the score later, but uh, note that uh, we received an, a score of 3.2. Uh, in this aviation score, the higher the score, the better. In terms of connectivity, we, we fare better than, than other countries. Airport accessibility is also okay because our, air, our main airport is located within the city. Next slide, please. So aviation infrastructure score is actually a score from 1 to 7, developed by the World Economic Forum. Um, it's based on the quality of the avi aviation infrastructure using indicators such as available seat kilometers, the number of departures, airport density, and the number of operating airlines, as well as the quality of air transport infrastructure for domestic and international flights. As I've said, the higher the score, the better. Can we go back to the table, please? So we receive a score of 3.2. If you, you will notice, uh, the Philippines received the lowest score in comparison to all other countries that are included in the table. And uh, uh, look at the number in terms of airports. We have uh, the Oxford Economics uh, recorded a total of 46 airports. So originally, I was thinking since, since we are an archipelagic country, I thought we had uh, many airports compared to our neighbor countries but um actually i don't think that's true uh japan has many airports uh compared to us and uh indonesia has 129 airports we only have 46. indonesia is similarly an archipelagic country okay so next slide please next slide. Okay, there are also other other indicators developed by the World Economic Forum and the Aviation Benefits Beyond Borders um, gives us, a, excuse me, I can't read. So in terms of air trade facilitation index, this captures how a country facilitates cargo through its customs and borders processes and regulations. So this indicators gives us an idea of our air transport services. So we scored 7.6, where in the reference score, the highest score should be 10. We ranked 54 out of 124 countries. In terms of e-pride friendliness index, um, this assesses the performance of 136 countries, which considers the actual penetration of electronic transactions and documents in the air cargo shipments. We scored very low at 0 0.61 out of 135 countries. Uh, in, in terms of enabling trade index, we, uh, this assesses the performance of 136 economies on domestic and international acts. Access by looking at the border administration, transport and digital infrastructure, transport services, and operating environment. We scored 4.1, wherein the reference score is 7. Uh, in terms of uh, ranking, we ranked 82nd out of 136 countries. So we not only need to improve our transport infrastructure, but we also need to improve our air transport services. Next slide, please. Okay, so the last issue is on institutional environment. Now, uh, several studies have been uh, raising concerns 
on the coherence and convergence among government agencies responsible for airport development and their implementation. And also, uh, it has been cited that uh, there is a need to separate the regulatory and developmental function of uh, agencies involved in the air transport sector. This is actually uh, an issue that is uh, not just constraining the air transportation sector um, alone, but this is a general issue for the whole transport sector in the Philippines. Next slide, please. Now, in 2009, the World Bank study uh, already highlighted that there's a need for an integrated system for planning, budgeting, building, and operating transport infrastructure in the Philippines. In 2009, the ADB also released their own study, which likewise noted that movement in our country usually requires the utilization of one or more mode of transportation. However, coordination among agencies responsible for transport infrastructure is generally very limited. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm turning off my video because uh, I was told that my connection is not really good. Okay, so next slide, please. The, the, the unfortunate um, fact is that the lack of coordination not only happens between government agencies, but also within the department themselves. There have been examples that, that were given wherein an airport opened, but uh, there was inadequate road access to and from airports, so the airport uh, wasn't really usable for, for the population. There was an, also an airport that opened in 2013, but it did not have proper navigational aids, which was later installed a year after. So these are the types of issues that are happening on the ground. Next slide, please. Okay, funding for the operation and maintenance of transport infrastructure is also usually not included in the budget. What is included is just the building of the air uh, air transport infrastructure or the airport, but uh, the the maintenance of that airport is not included, which which is sad. Next slide, please. Independent airport authorities also find it difficult to improve or procure airport facilities and equipment even if they have the budget because of the lack of um, delineation in terms in terms of mandate or sometimes it's confusing because uh, government agencies have um, overlapping mandates next slide please uh, this is uh, the conflicting responsibilities of government agencies in the air transport sector is also a problem and it is a problem for a lot of the sectors of the transportation sector in general this is the parang i think we lost dr francisco uh valerie would you like to take over until we uh and until she comes back uh all right uh, hello yes hello good afternoon Paul. um actually this is the last slide for the prevailing issue and challenges um Dr. Fred, Dr. Chris was all actually trying to mention that there were conflicting responsibilities as regulator and operator for CAAP. And there is actually, um, this is because they were overlapping functions related to planning, budgeting, and programming of airport policies. Um, next slide. So... Um, continuing the presentation, what has been done to address the prevailing issues and challenges mentioned in the previous slides? We now move on to the government plans, programs, and strategies. The last two administrations actually prioritized infrastructure, and the good thing to note is that the GTB allocation for infrastructure spending had already increased from 5% to 6%. Next, please. 
However, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Build, Build, Build program rearranged for the IFPs to prioritize projects that would bring the most developmental impact with the reallocation of funding. And now, with the economy's gradual direction towards recovery, the BBB program continues to expand and is now able to realign its implementation and project delivery. Next, please. With the release of the PDP 2023 to 2028, the government was able to recognize the challenges in the aviation industry, such as connectivity barriers caused by air traffic congestion and the inadequate financial capability for capacity building to accommodate the projected increase in demand. So the government is aware of these challenges and that they are likely to persist. Next part. For the strategy, strategies, some of the strategies that were laid out in the PDP include firstly, the rehabilitation and maintenance of existing airports, which will be continued and complemented by the development of access roads to address issues with congestion. And as for developing new airports, there is a highlight for needing to build new airports outside of urban areas. And this spatial planning is forward-looking because it takes into consideration acquiring adequate space for future expansion projects. Next spot. Of course, the government will continue to pursue night rating of regional airports. And as of the latest annual report of DOTR, there are 21 night rated airports, um, which was already completed. And eight of... Uh, Eight new airports were being uh, were under project development um, in the BBB page last June 2022. And lastly, one way to support or boost tourism is by providing direct access to tourist sites. This is possible following a hub and spoke model wherein gateway air airports will be connected to feeder airports. Next spot. So these are the targets outlined in the BDP, which is to further increase the number of both passenger and cargo transport via air. Next spot. And here we have the annual summary of IFPs with 14 air transport infrastructure projects out of the 194 total. Next. And um, this is just a more detailed version of the 14 projects where we see that there are five new airports being developed. Two of them are already approved for implementation, while the rest of the projects are, that are listed are under imp improvement of operations and facilities. Um, and there is actually one project that will be focusing on the improvement of air traffic management and air navigation, which will be concessionary through a private sector. Ayan. And lastly, we have the um, government infrastructure policies on air transport. Most of these policies are still Senate bills or are still uh, undergoing approval. And uh, while the other, while we have here the creation of the Philippine Airports Authority and the amending of RA nine four nine seven, which were just carried over from the last Congress, and the Open Skies policy being the last recent legislative action documented. Okay, um, next part. So uh, what can we do to improve further? Okay, um, one of our recommendations into, is to maintain the commitment to allot the 5 to 6% of GDP to infrastructure spending, continue government's awareness about the issues and challenges faced by the air transport sector, and then use more appropriate indicators to guide policymakers in their goal to improve the performance of the sector. Lastly, fast track government process and make it more attractive for private sector to partner with government in providing for the infrastructure needs of the country. Overall, the government is on the right path in improving our infrastructure our transport inf air in transport infrastructure, and it recognizes the needs of the sector. However, time is, cru is a crucial element that must be considered with the rising air travel demand and the projected growth globally. So um, the COVID-19 pandemic actually bought us some time in to realign these um, 
targets, ay, to realign our project plans for these new targets. Thank you.